So again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the health and wellness spot. Now, if you're not subscribed, kindly consider subscribing. And for those who have subscribed, thank you for supporting the channel. Today, I want to talk about anti-nutrients. We've been talking about uh, healthy diets, nutritious diets all the time. And I find it important to talk about anti-nutrients because these are the uh, nutrients in quotes that block the actual important nutrients uh, absorption. So things like zinc, magnesium, iron, uh, and the vitamins. So anti-nutrients block this from being absorbed and therefore you will experience deficiency uh, syndromes for all these important nutrients in the body. So uh, it's important to know where the anti-nutrients come from and the major source of anti-nutrients are plants. So most of the plants are, are best products that we consume, vegetables, uh, cereals, they come from plants and this is where anti-nutrients come from. So how do plants develop these anti-nutrients? Remember, uh, as humans or animals, we have a chance to run if we've been attacked by an enemy. But plants do not have that chance to run because they are stagnant. And then, uh, and therefore, sorry, plants have developed uh, different mechanisms uh, to counter this. So since we cannot run, then we grow a, a, a different approach to how to protect ourselves from dangerous insects, dangerous human beings, and even uh, livestock. So that's where anti-nutrients uh, started developing. So, uh, number one, uh, anti-nutrients. So I'll just go straight to the anti-nutrients. And uh, here, I've uh, labeled around five of them, anti-nutrients that are of importance to human beings, okay? So these five, uh, I'll explain the sources, and I'll also, I'll also explain uh, their effects on humans and insects, so that you get to understand the problem with this and how to solve that problem. Number one, is phytoestrogens. Now, phytoestrogens uh, are majorly in legumes and mostly in soy products. So, baby formulas that contain soy products, soy milk, soya beans, all these are what I label soy products. So, these products have high content of phytoestrogens. Remember, the major word here is estrogens. And estrogens to males, what do they do? they lower testosterone and that means they act as birth control okay so the same same concept happens in insects too so these uh, uh, phytoestrogens they control the birth effect in both insects and human beings so with that in in mind uh, you will reduce the population of humans you will also reduce the population of insects and that will aid the uh, the, the, the development or the existence of the species of these plants. So phytoestrogens uh, are very dangerous, but they look like a small factor. But they are very dangerous uh, in the long run and when you consume these products in high quantities. Number two is phytic acid. Now phytic acid is found in nuts, peanuts, and, uh, and, and those seeds that uh, uh, are nutty in nature. So most nuts contain phytic acid. And now phytic acid has a problem. Why? The, problem, the major problem with phytic acid is it blocks the absorption of zinc, magnesium, iron, and calcium. Now once you block uh, the absorption of zinc, that means men will have a problem in, erectile, uh, in erection. That is erectile dysfunction. Even reproductive health will be a problem to men. And iron, that means for both genders, there will be a problem with blood uh, development. So anemia will come, uh, will ensue. Now calcium, we all know that calcium is used in development of bones and, uh, and, and a strong uh, physique and structure. So if you affect the absorption of calcium, that means you will affect uh, the musculoskeletal structure of a human being. So phytic acid is number two. Number three, uh, we have a component called uh, lectins. Now lectins, are the ones that uh, majorly people refer to as gluten. These are protein components that are found in uh, brown rice, uh, wheat products, chapati, uh, pasta, bread. So all those wheat products contain uh, lectins, which is gluten, majorly gluten. Now these proteins 
are the ones that cause a leaky gut. I explained the leaky gut, but I don't mind repeating it. A leaky gut is where a consumption of wheat products which contain gluten uh, cause perforations in the gut or in your intestines. Then these perforations allow for seeping or for leaking in of proteins into the lymphatic system where they encounter white blood cells and your defense mechanisms. And then this will later come out as acne or uh, skin eruptions and people might end up thinking that these are protein allergies. They are not protein allergies. We don't have protein allergies. All we have is a leaky gut caused by uh, wheat products. Then they allow the leaking of uh, proteins into the lymphatic system and therefore the immune uh, system reacts to it. That comes out as uh, skin eruptions, which you call protein allergies. Number four, oxalates. Now oxalates are highly found in chocolates, spinach, peanuts also, and raspberry. Now, oxalates uh, are, are like uh, are, are chemical compounds that uh, when they interact with calcium, they form stones, they form insoluble compounds. And this is a major problem because for those people who have uh, 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 pro kidney problems, they also accelerate uh, the formation of uh, the, the deterioration of the kidneys. How? Because they form kidney stones. So calcium uh, comes in reaction with uh, these oxalates and forms calcium oxalates, which are what we call kidney stones. And these uh, might end up uh, or might lead you to a kidney transplant. So this is a dangerous one. Uh, so it's as, 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 as I've mentioned, those foods that contain chocolates, spinach, uh, peanut and raspberry contain high contents of oxalates. And the last one is saponins. Now saponins are components that exist like soap. They have a soap uh, like effect. So what do they do? They form a surfactant uh, effect in your lungs. That means uh, they form like a, uh, the f they form a foam, a foam like a, uh, how can, I, how can I put it? Let's just call it foam. They form foam. Now this foam in your lungs uh, inhibits the absorption of oxygen and uh, the functions of the lungs. So saponins are very dangerous to your lungs and they might cause lung dysfunction. And these saponins are also found in legumes, which takes us back to beans, takes us back to soya, so, so soya beans and soy products and peas. So these are the five uh, major anti-nutrients that plants use to protect themselves from you and harmful insects that want to consume them so now this uh, will help you understand uh, that if i consume certain foods i get bloated if i consume certain foods i feel they are bitter and sometimes i feel uh, my stomach is uh, painful or there's gastritis development of gastritis and all this if that is not SIBO small intestine bacterial overgrowth then that is as a result of uh, these foods now, what do you do about these foods? Because some of them like beans, peas, uh, most of them we cannot avoid them apart from soy products that we are warning people to avoid them because of uh, high estrogen contents. Uh -huh. uh, the only way to avoid this is to eat them when fermented. Most of these, like where they are vegetables, uh, you ferment them. Okay, And some of these like beans and uh, these seeds, you soak them, after soaking them, then uh, they'll be good for, for use. Okay, now if it's not as again, if it's not uh, your bloating or your, your reaction is not caused by SIBO, then you can continue eating this. But if it is caused by SIBO, then you have to correct SIBO because uh, now that will need uh, another regimen, either medication or uh, a correction through appropriate diets. But these ones, you either ferment them, soak them, or if it's more uh, complicated, you fast. Now, fasting helps you correct the gut. Fasting helps you clear this and the effects that are caused by this, which are inflammation and, uh, and gastritis. So once you clear that, now you revert to keto, healthy keto diets. So keto diets have zero uh, anti-nutrients. So you might be tempted or you might be uh, allowed to start consuming keto, healthy keto diets to avoid this. So thank you. We'll see you in the next.